if I did forget to introduce myself in the beginning, and I think I always do, uh, then my name is Artur Slanton. So I'm a support engineer, trainer, and a consultant at Zabbix. And today I'm going to be showing you a presentation about SNMP. So let me share my screen first. Let's see, screen share should be going. Let me turn on the camera. All right. And we will be focusing specifically on building templates for SNMP devices. So let's begin. Let's talk about some of the best practices. Um, so uh, how to monitor SNMP agents with Zabbix? Of course, we have plenty of pre-built templates that you can use out of the box. Um, you can always use your vendor documentation or SNMP walk results and create items that way. And of course, based on that vendor documentation, you can also create your own low level discovery rules. Most of the time I'd say, I see a lot of people using the pre-built templates and the templates from the community share. But, but sometimes if you're maybe, if you have a more exotic set of entities in your environment, networking devices, storage devices, things like that, this, this just isn't enough. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can build custom SNMP templates and how would you go about that? Because it can be quite tricky. So first off, vendor documentation is your best friend. And I'm not kidding when I say that. Um, without vendor documentation, it takes me two, three times uh, longer to create a proper SNMP template. If vendor documentation is robust, has a list of the OIDs and, and their description, that really helps me out. I just uh, took some examples over here that I put in my slides. Um, and plugged in some screenshots from the vendor documentation. So definitely try and get in touch with your hardware vendor and ask them, hey, do you have, if it's not publicly available, of course, do you have some sort of SNMP documentation that you can provide? Uh, if not, don't worry yet. We still have a couple of uh, options here. We can check for vendor provided uh, MIB files. And then we can use some sort of MIB browser. We can download these MIB files, plug them into a MIB browser, and then perform a search and search for the metrics that we are looking for. This can be a bit more problematic, actually. I've done it myself. It still takes longer than using a proper vendor documentation. Um, but it's still a way out, a good way out. And those MIB files, they should usually be available, usually um, either on some sort of a public download page or you can just get in touch with the vendor. Problem is I've seen vendors just give you, instead of a specific set of MIBs, they, they tend to just give you 20, 30, 40, or maybe a hundred MIB files. And then you have to go through each of them in a MIB browser and that can take time. Now, thankfully you can find a MIB browser that has a search function and just search by name, for example, fan speed, uh, some sort of power line, something, um, temperatures, other, and so on. All right. So in our case, in the case of Zabbix support and probably in some of your use cases, so, okay, we build a template, but before we actually apply it on a live device, we want to test it. So how would we go about that? This is quite tricky. Um, in our case, so a customer tells us, hey, can you build a template for, let's say, a Cisco switch or HP switch or some sort of power supply? Um, all right, sure. But um, usually, of course, customers don't want to give us direct access to their devices, which is only reasonable security and everything, right? So what, how do we proceed then? Because we can build a template. We don't test it. We don't know how the device behaves in real life. Um, maybe it's a bit different than documented. So then what we have to do, what we have to resort to is using an SNMP SIM. So over here, I've, get, I've posted the link to a GitHub page for publicly available SNMP SIM, a really, really nice and useful tool. Um, somewhat easy to install once you install it the first time and set it up, it's easy to replicate. So, um, and I will try to provide the steps over here, how you can set it up for the first time. And this can essentially simulate your device based on the output, for example, of SNMP walk. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So before we proceed, what I have prepared over here, I have a CentOS 8BM with Zabbix 5.2, latest and greatest. Zabbix documentation ready, because uh, I don't wanna make any mistakes when I'm writing my own SNMP discovery keys uh, or OIDs or anything like that. I want to have the syntax at hand. 
um, SNMP sim, SNMP walk command output, vendor documentation, ideally, it still pairs up very nicely with the SNMP sim and the MIB files also for some things that the vendor documentation does not cover. So first things first, I perform an SNMP walk, maybe a restricted SNMP walk starting from a specific subtree, depends on what I need. Um, in this case, I, I just performed it on everything starting from the root of the tree all the way down. So this was a pretty large, pretty chunky file that I have over here. Okay, so I have this file. Then I proceed with setting up SNMP SIM and we have a couple of prerequisites here. I have to install Python. In my case, I installed Python 3. By using the package installer for Python PIP, I installed SNMP SIM. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, if you care about security and you should, SNMP SIM won't run under the elevated user permissions. So I wasn't able to execute it as my root user. So I created a new user group and user accounts, created a directory under that user over here, mkdir, and placed my SNMP walk or MIB file there. So in, in my case, it was SNMP walk file output of this here SNMP walk file plugged it in over here. This, you can see over here, a screenshot from my uh, Venice CP window. I just placed it here. This is how it looks. After that is done, we run the SNMP SIM. And this is how we execute it. Uh, I specify the endpoint. So which IP address, which interface should this SNMP SIM listen on and which port. And in this case, notice, and this is something that you have to be careful with if you're running this for the first time. The uh, file name becomes the community name so over here. This is my file name, 192.168.1126.raw. And that'll be my community name. And here I have some parameters for SNMP version three also. I wish to simulate SNMP version three device. All right. Um, now that I have started SNMP sim with this SNMP walk file imported, I perform the SNMP walk on the simulated device. Over here, I pass the community. The community is the file name, specify the IP address, specify the port. And okay, I can do an SNMP walk on this device. So in real life, this would be um, like, so the customer or maybe your network admin gives you an SNMP walk file from the device itself, from the original device. And then for testing purposes, you plug it into SNMP SIM and then you can play around with it, um, simulate Zabbix SNMP discovery and things like that instead of, you know, just hammering the device itself constantly with tests, SNMP requests and things like that, which can cause some performance problems on the device itself. We don't want to have that. So that's why I now, I'm now executing SNMP walk on the simulated device. All right. Now I know that it works. SNMP walk, SNMP get is working fine. Now I can finally test it from the Zabbix side. So I create a host in Zabbix. I select SNMP version the IP address that I'm going to use, the port, be careful, I'm using a custom port here, and the community. All right, then I create an item, specify some OID, and I will talk about later on just about some SNMP basics about how I obtained this OID. Um, and then the item actually becomes enabled and I can get my data from the simulated device. Of course, it's going to be static data based on the output of SNMP walk. So I'm going to keep receiving the same value over and over again, but hey, at least I know it works. The OID with the index works. How did I get this numeric value though? And we have kept insisting that numeric values are better than uh, textual representations. So let's talk about, so yes, in the SNMP walk, I had textual outputs. So I grepped by the, uh, the textual information that I needed. In this case, it was, incoming octets. And then I use the SNMP translate on this here textual representation, incoming octets. I obtain the OID and then depending on the port number, I just plug the index at the end. So this is how you can go from the textual representation by using SNMP translate to the numeric representation. Of course, you need to have the specific MIB imported on your uh, OS from which you're executing this SNMP translate. Otherwise it won't be able to do translation. But I did have everything and the translation was success. Okay, creating an item is simple, right? Everyone can do it. Just open the documentation and, and do it easy. How about creating a low level discovery rule? This is once again, where we 
where, where things get a bit tricky and we delve a bit deeper. Um, so I created a discovery rule. I'm going to be discovering all of the indexes on this OID, which is a description OID. And of course, uh, we will discover uh, all of the descriptions. So again, all of the indexes here and all of the descriptions. So I create the discovery rule. I create a prototype um, for incoming octets. It will be populated with all of the discovered indexes uh, from my discovery rule. The description will be plugged into the name and into the key. Okay. And I have the discovery running, but I have some error messages over here. No such instance currently exists at this OID. And this is something that maybe some of you have encountered who have worked with SNMP discovery. Um, this is actually caused by the fact that we have extra indexes on if description. So if description over here, the uh, OID that we are discovering, we have more indexes here than on the OID over here that we are populating, that we are creating items based on. So in this case, yeah, it tries to create an item uh, with an OID and an index at the end for which we don't have an OID instance. How do we work around this? So I would open the SNMP walk file. I would once again, take a look. So for which indexes do I have incoming octets? Grab a list of indexes. This will probably represent a specific network interface type. And then for example, I filter by if description. So in this case, I am filtering out interface types which for which I don't want to create pro, uh, items from prototypes because these items won't have instances on this OID. So filtering is your friend in this case. Try and take a look at the SNMP walk output and figure out what indexes are you trying, what OIDs with what indexes are you trying to create that in reality don't exist and filter those out. So here we can see, um, a set of common filters that are used. Ideally, in case of SNMP discovery, we should use filtering um, to filter by specific entities. For example, as I said, by interface types. So I want my discovery only to discover specific interface types, specific interface names maybe, um, or even I can filter out some specific indexes if I know that maybe they cause problems. That they, these specific indexes cause a situation like this. So we can filter them out. Okay, another error message that I have received, I have implemented filters um, and I am receiving an error message on the discovery rule itself. Cannot accurately apply filter, no value received for macro if description. What does that mean? And here I have a nice table that tries to explain this. Um, it's a bit complex to explain, but let's see. So Zabbix tries to apply filters on these three macros, interface name, interface type, interface description. So for interface name, we discover three indexes, one, two, three. For interface type, we discover one and two. And for interface description, we also discover one and two. The thing is, Zabbix tries to apply filters on non-existing indexes for interface type and interface description in this case. This is the error message, no value received for if type and if description on these here elements. We have to be real careful here. And this is where we proceed with making our discovery rules more modular. So this is probably caused by, once again, specific interface types, not having interface type indexes or interface description indexes. This is a situation that can actually happen. So how do I work around this? I try to create modular discovery rules or separate templates for separate interface types. So over here, I can see I have a parent template that has four children linked. So interface type ADSL template, interface type FXS, Giga ETH, T1, and each of them uses its own set of very granular filters. And in, in, th in these cases for each of these templates, I know that this situation won't happen. So I know that I will have all of the indexes for all of the entities that I'm filtering out based on the output of my SNMP walk. And this actually enables me to also just easily link and unlink templates, child templates to the parent template as I need them. 
and easily enable and disable specific discovery rules. So the idea here is don't use a single discovery rule just for everything, especially if it causes errors on items or on the discovery rule itself. Be more granular. Take a look at the SMP walk and compare your indexes by what you are trying to filter. And that's pretty much it. Quite a short and to the point presentation. Um, I definitely recommend you guys take a look at these here examples and these here are messages because they are quite common. If you're seeing them, do an SNMP walk on your device. Look at these here examples that I have implemented over here and over here and see if you aren't encountering a situation like so. Usually it's actually quite simple to resolve once you take a look at the SNMP walk and start comparing what OIDs your device is providing. Of course, some devices will be providing proper uh, proper indexes for every OID, and this won't be an issue at all. But other devices, yeah, they don't provide every index for every OID out there. So that's it. Hopefully now you guys know how you can very easily, well, relatively easily, um, simulate an SNMP device on your own VM and create low-level discovery rules. All of these examples were created on the simulated device. So none of these were created on the real well, it was a real device, but it was a simulation of that of that real device that I created these examples on. Thank you. And do we have any questions for me, Igers? Uh, can you help me out here? Yes. Uh, thank you, Arturs, for the very like this is good uh, kickstart guide for to to develop a new template uh, over SNMP. That's uh, and I really love the part uh, about uh, covering all the popular er error types of uh, like. O OIDs exist. Yes, because I spent a lot of time figuring them out back in the day. So <laughs> that's really useful. useful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it looks like uh, ah, here uh, some questions just arise uh, a few seconds ago. Uh, one question from my side uh, uh, why not uh, use uh, maybe the friendly OID name in, while uh, writing in that template? Can you give some mm -hmm. arguments to use or not use? Oh, you mean the textual representation? Yes. Yeah. Um, so the reason is, for example, when we, let's say we are monitoring our SNMP devices by proxy and let's call it proxy A. Proxy A has all of the necessary MIBs and we can use textual representations and we can use textual representations only if we have the proper MIBs imported. So let's say this is the case on proxy A. And then we decide to maybe load balance a bit, so to speak, or maybe just move our host to a different proxy and we move them to a different proxy and all of a sudden these textual representations aren't supported anymore. So why is that? Because we forgot to move and import our MIB files to the new proxy. And maybe let's say it, it's been a couple of years since this procedure has been done and our new admin doesn't really know how to do it. So it takes extra time to figure that out. So I'd say use numeric representations. That way you won't have a situation where you migrate a host from one proxy to another and you have forgotten to migrate the MIBs along with it. Numeric representations will always work. They're a bit more complex at a glance, but that's why we have the item key where you can provide the description of the item itself, of the OID itself. All right, yeah, thank you for the explanation. Yeah, that was the last question. Um, mm -hmm. 